Welcome back everyone, I've taken my sweet time with the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G, I'm ready to bring you my honest impressions of the device and show you the unboxing experience, everything that's in the package, and what Samsung has to offer with their latest A-series device. Everything from the 120Hz display, the cameras, IP rating, new speakers, processor, and more will be addressed and explained now. To start, with Samsung's A52 5G box, we get the included clear case, standard USB-C to A cable, wall adapter, and the SIM tool. Note that the earbuds have been removed this time around. There was a bit of confusion as to what the wall adapter's charging speed actually is. Now, the one that comes with it is 15 watts, and that's perfectly fine. It's nice that they've included it, but the phone is capable of 25 watt charging. About that matte finish back, you can be the judge of which one looks more premium. This or the glossy plastic of the A32 5G or the predecessor of this, the A51. I could definitely see people having mixed answers on this. Personally, I think the matte finish back has been done well here. The buttons are audibly tactile and both are placed on the right side. Don't be fooled though, the whole phone is entirely made of plastic, even the sides. Thankfully, they have managed to put in the water resistance rating of IP67 without removing the headphone jack or the micro SD card slot. These were features that really mattered to me. Samsung isn't switching that up on their customer base, and that makes me happy. The first thing I did when I received the phone was pop my 256GB micro SD card in. You can go up to 1TB. This is on top of the 128GB of onboard storage, which, in case if you were wondering, is UFS 2.1 speed. Contactless payment is supported on this phone, so naturally, my debit card and credit card details went into the Google Pay app, and I was all set up for tap to pay. After that, I enabled face registered unlock and entered my biometrics for the on-screen optical scanner. Face unlock here works just as well as it did on the previous Galaxy A51, which is to say, it works really well. The on-screen fingerprint scanner is also pretty good, it is placed well, the animation looks good, and the only negative thing I have to say about this is that I had a few instances where outside in the cold, it wouldn't register my finger, but this only happened outside when it was really cold temperatures. While I was outside, I did a quick photo sample test, in a few different locations actually. Bringing along my other phones, I noticed this A52 really stood out in terms of the detail captured in the shots. Colors and dynamic range were already good on the phone's predecessor, but this phone is 64 megapixels, and the detail in my shots, I mean they really stood behind the specs on paper. We'll talk more about the cameras in a bit. Both this device and the 4G model of A52 are running Android 11 and One UI 3.1. What's really impressive, and quite frankly something I didn't see coming from Samsung, is their promise of three major OS upgrades. For a lot of tech enthusiasts, this makes the Galaxy A series, particularly the A52 and A72, a lot more appealing this year. To go with this renewed promise of, you know, further software updates and better longevity in the software support, they've included a 4500 milliamp hour battery. Curiously, the more affordable A32 and even the budget A12 have a larger 5000 milliamp hour battery. This calls for me doing more phone comparison videos again soon, not only putting the A52 against its predecessor, but also the current A lineup. It is a bright 120Hz display with 5G connectivity, and it's only 4500 milliamp hours for the battery cell. Now, Samsung claims the average user is going to get two days worth of use from a single charge. I'm skeptical about this one. Battery is something I'm going to be testing extensively and let you know my thoughts about it and whether or not it holds up as the days go on using it. I timed how long that battery took to charge up from 0 to 100% fully charged, and it was just under 1 hour and 30 minutes. This 1 hours and 30 minutes was with the 15 watt charger, so the 25 watt adapter that you could buy additionally and use would be even faster, and even this is more than sufficient for me. By the way, if you appreciate this video and you're liking this style of presentation, give me a like on the video. To be honest with you, in my personal experience with the Galaxy A series devices, the battery hasn't been the culprit of phones going obsolete or out of favor. Rather, it has been the chipset. Samsung has cut corners in the past by commissioning the company MediaTek to make the processors on a lot of their phones. 
Well, not with the A52 series. Here we have the fan favorite Qualcomm Snapdragon series, and on the 5G variant, we have the Snapdragon 750G, an octa-core 8 nanometer chipset paired with the Adreno 619 graphics. Simply put, it's not the best chipset put into a device of this price range, but it's pretty damn good. It's pushing a lot more frames per second now in the user interface, with the display being 120 hertz, but even when games don't support that high refresh rate, they look good on this screen. I have tested out COD Mobile, PUBG, Asphalt 9, and Genshin Impact. Pleased with the gameplay so far. The display panel size is a respectable 6.5 inches. Now, what's really interesting about this screen is that it is 120 hertz, AMOLED with a hole punch, and it's 1080p, which on paper is uh, exactly the same specs, aside from the pixel density, as the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G. The quad rear lens array on A52 and the selfie camera were parts of the phone that I was most excited to test out. We have a 64 megapixel main lens, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, 5 megapixel macro lens, and a dedicated depth sensing camera for portrait blur images. Just a reminder, everything that I do not cover in this video is likely going to be addressed in a dedicated video about that topic or in an upcoming upload. I just don't want to overwhelm you with long videos. So, just going through the images I took outside, I was most impressed with the main camera, and video taken on it is more usable than any A-series phone I have previously tested out. As a quick and final note about the software, I just wanted to go over the bloatware that came on this phone when I bought it, just straight out of the box. The usual Samsung stock apps are here, of course, so some of them are actually useful, like the Samsung Pay app and the radio, and yes, it does have FM radio capability. There's the Microsoft suite of apps, which uh, I immediately disabled, as I recommend you do as well. There's Facebook, Netflix, and Spotify. Let's touch on the loudspeaker improvements now. On the A52, the sound is uh, more stereo, thanks to the earpiece accompanying the bottom speaker. Now the earpiece can play sound out loud. It's not great by any means, but it is an improvement, and that's what I've been asking for. Many changes to this phone make it an interesting successor, but Samsung has raised the price on this compared to last year's model, so the A51 and A51 5G are still phones that you should consider buying, even in 2021. In case you were wondering, the model I have here has 6GB of RAM. Now, I'm very pleased with the multitasking performance so far. I'm going to take a deeper dive into the multitasking and the RAM in my comparison videos between this and the A51 and comparing this to other phones. With all that said, if you're looking to pick up this device, I can tell you so far honestly, my impressions have been very positive. Soon, all of your A52 questions will be answered by my review video and by my comparisons between this phone and other related devices, so while you're at it, drop me a suggestion for what you want to see the A52 compared to. Subscribe to my channel if you're new around here, and hit the notification bell icon if you actually don't want to miss those upcoming videos. The last recent week that I did those daily uploads, I had a lot of fun making them, and I don't know when I'm going to be doing uploads to that frequency, but I hope you really enjoyed this video, because getting this phone in Canada before the North America release just wasn't easy, but it's worth it if you say so in the comments. Bye for now, my friends.